On today's episode of Titus and Tate, we are rolling out our 2020, 2021. I'll never get used to saying that many 20s. Uh, the, the college basketball season, we're doing the preview state. It's preview mm. time on the program. We are doing uh, two weeks of previews, two full weeks. We are doing the top 100, just, uh, I don't know, whatever, things. Things, things to keep an eye on, storylines, what have you. Things Who cares? to watch. Things to watch. I think it's that simple. I'll say this. If you're that concerned about the format, you've come to the wrong show. Yes, uh, we this apologize. Is not, this is not the <laughs> show sorry. for you. Uh, so we're just going to list off like 100 things that are going to happen, might happen, that we want to talk about for our previews. That's Should happen. Say. So today we are doing uh, numbers 100 through 76. And then if you can use your big brain here, we'll do uh, 75 through 50, I believe. Is mm. that how it would work? Mm. And then... Yeah, or is it 75 through 50, 51? <laughs> it is 75 through 51. Yes. And then 50 through 26. Don't do this to yourself. 20. Why, why are you doing math right now? <laughs> Point is, we're doing previews for two weeks, folks. So uh, buckle in. College basketball is here. We start with a bonus, right? Yeah, so we should start at 100, right? We are in the preview. We told you we'd start with 100 things to watch this season. But in honor of a friend of the program, mm -hmm. one of the original friends of the program, a woman that memed her way to the Final Four, in 2018 she of course is sister jean so 101 this is sister jean 101 because she is 101 years old and she put out to the world when that day came her birthday she said god must have more work for me to do which begs the question titus is loyola back are they making a run are they going to go to the final four should clayton custard be watching out for i don't think he's there anymore but where are we with sister jean and also shout out to sister jean sister jean 101 years old uh it just now <laughs> dawned on me that I don't know if Jean is her first name or last name. It's her first name, mm. right? I think it's her first name. Because yes. I thought I thought there's Jean Dolores Schmidt. I think is. Her oh, full okay. Name. The Dolores yes. threw me off because I remember Dolores as well. Yes. And then I so not Dolores to be confused with Westwood name. Dolores. Yeah, Westwood <laughs> Dolores. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I was yeah I, I I had to pause for a second. I thought maybe yeah. she's sister Dolores Jean. She's sister 101. Jean. One oh one. Dolores Schmidt, one hundred and one years old. God bless her. God love her. Mm. Uh, more work our, to be done. That's our bonus pick. Uh, now let's get into it, Tate. Our top one hundred things. Look at. We start with this. Uh, there was a story on ESPN.com a month ago, written by Myron Medcalf, um, uh, uh, who's who's covered college basketball for ESPN for a while. And the 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 headline was basically this: How the hell is Hawaii going to play basketball this year? So that's where I want to start because uh, coronavirus is going to be a theme throughout the season, as we know. It was. It ended up being the theme of last season, um, as the NCAA tournament got canceled. It has not gone away. As, mm. as it turns out, it is still the thing. Today, we just found out that Tom Izzo has been has tested positive for it. So uh, hope he recovers fast. Yes. I assume he's thinking of you, coach. Be, he's not going to be the only coach that tests positive, unfortunately, throughout the season, I'm guessing. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk about scheduling, all that kind of stuff. And Myron Medcalf asked the question that none of us, literally none mm -hmm. of us had thought of. Mm -hmm. uh, the Maui Invitational got moved from Maui to Asheville because Hawaii had – a uh, uh, law, an order, uh, 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 both, whatever you call it, <laughs> a resolution in place that said yep. anyone coming from anywhere, basically the mainland, any other country, whatever, you have to quarantine for 14 days before you can, you're allowed to, to go sip pina coladas on poolside in Hawaii, right? So how does that work with the college basketball team? Uh, since then, we have some clarity, Tate. October 15th, Hawaii, the state of Hawaii, like change the the rules i guess to where now if you test negative if you can prove that you test tested negative within a 72 hour window you can skip the 14 day quarantine mm -hmm. um so i think we're good but i just wanted to bring that up and I, I i i guess my question to you is do you think this is a coincidence that they put this in place right as hawaii football and basketball season was about to start it does feel a bit timely, and it also feels like one of those things where Hawaii is always a little bit forgotten. I mean, I remember, you know, the the Hawaii football team had the Colt Britton years where they were, you know, undefeated, and Colt Britton was setting records, and everyone was like, wow, Hawaii, I'm tuned in. And then they played Georgia, yeah. get blown out, everyone's like, oh, yeah, uh. yeah that's kind of what we <laughs> expect. Oh, we got them. And, yeah. you know, now I think Hawaii is we, – we joked about where Rick Pitino went to Hawaii yeah, early people in forget. his career. Yeah, and uh, they That's still really have started. a chance to be a sleeping giant at some point. So it's good to hear that they have a chance now to compete. Yeah, so they are going to play, though. That was That's, yeah, the, takeaway. that's the resolution. We, uh, so if anyone out there was wondering, I think Hawaii, they're, they're going to find a way to – but, man, that, wouldn't that be a – if a team shows up to the mainland and, like, their their test doesn't fit the requirements and then they're kind of, like, just – or not the mainland, the, the, to Hawaii, and then they're kind of just, like, stuck – 
and they have to quarantine or go back or I don't know. That's I want that I, to happen. I don't yeah, know I would, I would I just, be I'm fine to stay chaos. in Hawaii. Yeah, you're like, I'll just stay here. I'll just I don't want Hawaii. anybody to get sick. I don't want anybody to like, I don't want like serious consequences from this thing, mm. but I do want a little chaos. I want a little like, how are we going to make this happen? Games getting canceled like that. I That, that makes it interesting, but I don't mm. want like real stakes. I just want content basically and that would be content that's always what we want is content especially (laughs) if it deals with hawaii and uh yeah we're pulling for you hawaii so that's number 100 uh moving on number 99 on our list uh so this is important and i think we got we gotta we gotta make note of this tape because Mm. uh there are some guys that aren't in college basketball anymore and the reason this Mm. is important is because uh that is the move when you're doing college basketball previews what you have to start with is you have to you have to instruct the general public of who teams have lost that's mm-hmm. that's really all you do is you mm-hmm. just say like, mm, you know, Sadiq Bay isn't going to be on this Villanova team anymore. They're going to have to yep. replace his production. Uh, yeah. Or Nico Mannion, you know, Nico a guy Mannion. that we loved last year is no yeah. longer going to be at Arizona. Or, you know, if you look at Duke, wow, Vernon Carey, a, a real trans, you know, transcendent talent that was there last year. One and done. That guy's out of there. Or Tyrese Halliburton, someone that you saw at Iowa State, no longer going to be there. Tyrese Maxey. How, how are they going to replace, gonna replace his production? How? 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 Obi Toppin. Obi Obi Toppin, yeah. What will they do in Dayton without Obi Toppin? That is that is the college basketball preview move. So we just wanted to point out with, with point number 99, there are guys that played college college basketball last year they're not going to play college basketball this year and uh yeah so there, there's that obi toppin is one of them as you said yes Cassius what, winston is somebody yeah okay well what is what is marquette going to do without marcus howard right marcus that's howard a that's, that's a guy that's yeah. a name james wiseman even though he played three games that is a man that played college basketball jeff that jackson no simpson that's three names and wow that was, that's yeah that was uh <laughs> not even a there. real guy but he's he's not going to be in michigan anymore. your guy caleb wesson uh, uh, you know also uh, a guy also uh, a name <laughs> A name that you should know. Uh, Miles is- Powell is another name <laughs> that you remember and should know. Uh, there's so many names. John Mooney is right, another so name that you should know. Those are names that are leaving. Uh, that brings us to number 98, which is uh, there are some names that are back, Tate. Yeah. This is, again, you, you cannot do a college basketball preview unless you just name names and don't offer any analysis towards those names whatsoever. You just point out, this guy left. This mm. guy's back. Mm. And uh, that's all I really know. <laughs> and, and let me just call this the Garrison Brooks. So I'll start with his name. <laughs> yeah. Garrison Brooks is going to be back at North Carolina. He is going to be on their team. He must be the star because, again, he is back. So uh, that is uh, that is all it takes in this rubric. Basically, the entire Wisconsin roster back. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're asking me, do, hey, hey, Mark, do you believe in Wisconsin? And I said mm. yes, which I don't, but I'm just doing it for role play here. Uh, why do you believe in them? My answer would be, they bring a lot of guys back. Mm. And I can't really explain it beyond that, but they they bring a lot of guys back. And I think yeah. that's important. I think we have yeah. to start there. So uh, just just keep your head on a swivel. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for that in college basketball. There are a lot of guys back. And mm. uh, that's that's one thing we wanted to point out in our previews. Kellen Grady is back for Davidson. That is my number one. Just wanted to point it out. Just wanted to let you know this man is back. Brad Davidson is back. Brad we should Davidson point out. Is back. That's probably yeah. the biggest one for the friends of the program. Brad mm-hmm. Davidson is still playing college basketball, literally uh, against all odds. And is maybe that years. it? Are those all the guys that are back? If we named them all? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think those are all the guys that are back. It, it, it does feel like with is every that the team. the dumbest bit we've ever done. I don't know, but I kind of loved it. You and I, as we made the list, we were like, this is how you win at college basketball. You just let people know that you know who is and who is not playing, yeah. and therefore you win. Like Yudoka Azubuke, gone. Marcus yeah. Garrett, back. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Enough with the nonsense. Uh, okay. We 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 got to lock in. That was that was stupid. Let's uh let's let's do number ninety seven <laughs> on our list, which um is th- this is serious. The, the the nonsense is out of the way. Mm-hmm. This is very serious. Uh, I want to do a vegan report because. Uh, we, we know famously, we talk about this on the show all the time when Mike Dom in his mm-hmm. off season, that one year when he's coming back to be a senior goes vegan, gets his ass kicked in Canada, basically announces, this is the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> I'm eating meat mm. again. Um, Michael Porter has gone vegan. This is a movement with amongst NBA guys as well, right? Like a lot of NBA guys are going plant-based. Uh, I think DeAndre Jordan might be one of them. If yeah, you know. of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this it's is like move. kind of a thing. I think Yoli Childs at BYU mm-hmm. kind of went dabbled in it. Also um, not back at BYU, gone. to the He's NBA. gone. He's, gone. He's a name that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> just keep you updated. That should have been the whole show. We should have, we should have just listed literally every guy that's back yeah. and then every guy that left. And yeah. there you go. We'll that's, get there. We'll get there. We got, the we got a ways to go. We got a ways to go. <laughs> uh so there, we have data points state that that athletes that go vegan 
regret it. This is a bad mm. move. Do not do this. Mm. Now, we also have a data point so far as an, as a, as an Ohio State alum, I, I am very in tune with the fact that Justin Fields has, an, uh, has, has, has made clear that he is turned to a plant-based diet. Yep. Justin Fields is balling out of his mind. Unbelievable. Right yeah. One of the he's best be the Heisman I've right. ever seen. Yeah. He yeah. has to be. Absolutely. He's, he's, he's playing out of his mind despite the veganism. So mm. I, I don't know where I land on it. I just wanted to make notes. So I, I, I just like thought it'd be interesting to keep tabs on it and, and, and do a little more science and let's track like who, who is a part of this. I think there's a kid on Georgia last year uh, that, that was vegan as well. But um, anyway, the point is I searched today in, in preparation for this. I said, did anybody go vegan? Is there, is there a mm. vegan college basketball player that we should, we should have eyes on, we should lock in on and make note of this. As it turns out, there is one. I found one guy and his mm. name, maybe you've heard of him before. His name is Luca Garza. Oh, wow. <laughs> And when did this happen? When did he the heavy to go favorite vegan? to be national player of the year, the preseason national player of the year? Uh, Sports Illustrated wrote an article on him about him uh, on July 21st. I think at this point his name was still in the NBA draft. He was still testing the waters, mm. and the, the headline reads: "Garza opts for a plant-based diet." And I, the only person quoted throughout the article is Garza's dad, and he, he had wow. quotes such as, "All we're doing is cutting out the middleman." Uh, Frank Garza said, "We're cutting out the cow." We're just going for what they eat. We're not eating the cow. We're eating what the yes, cow. Yes, yes, yeah. We're cutting out the middleman, which is a cow, cow. Which is the middleman is a cow. <laughs> Ridiculous, but also I get it, and it's also exactly what happened with Mike Dom. I mean, this is yep. so. A, this seems like foreshadowing that we do not want to see. If you're an Iowa fan or a Luca Garza fan, or on the Luca Garza to win National Player of the Year bandwagon, because. Mike Don put his name in the draft. He tested the waters. The NBA said, you need to slim up a little bit to be able to play in the NBA. He goes plant-based, goes vegan, ends up getting out of the waters, mm -hmm. getting dry, going back to college mm -hmm. basketball. He couldn't and then swim. Obviously, he, he got in the waters. He couldn't even swim because he had no yeah, muscle mass. Yeah, and he's like, I'm so tired. He's like, why am Where's I so tired? And I'm cold. <laughs> yeah. Where's my cow? And I have backs under my eyes. Someone bring this me a is terrible. This is not good. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I I I had no idea about this. I I was just looking. I was like, I wonder if there's even one guy, uh, you know, maybe the backup point guard on San Diego State or something. Uh, you know, I I, I didn't. And lo lo and behold, it was the best player in the country has has turned to a vegan diet. So that is that is something to monitor. We I also found this in this art that article. Uh, according to his father, ever since Luca had a ten pound cyst removed, he's been much more in tune with his body. And I just wanted to make note of that because at one point, Luca Garza apparently had a cyst that weighed 10 pounds, Tate. I'm what? sorry, what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. When? What? Yeah, there's so many questions to be asked. And what then, if, what if Zion was not fat? He just has like a 40 pound cyst. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I mean. When they say a guy lost like 20 pounds, like if it was 10 pounds with a, was a cyst, that's great. So uh, Luca Garza body update, uh, just, you know, I'm not making any definitive conclusions either way yet. I just, I'm just saying, let's, let's all make note of what happens this season. And, uh, remember, remember a couple of weeks back when we were like, you would never get this on another podcast previewing college basketball. A lot of people are going <laughs> to talk about Luca Garza. And I don't think a lot of them are going to talk about the 10 pound cyst the 10 pound or cyst. the veganism. I don't think so. They may bring it up in <laughs> passing, but it's not going to be the headliner. That's good to know. Number 97, pretty strong. To think that we get the, the National Player of the Year candidate in at number 97 after just riffing for the last two, pretty yeah. solid. There we All go. right, number 96. Uh, this is one that is a, a question that has been asked throughout this program since he entered the college basketball landscape when he decided to play for Big Blue Nation and Coach Cal. And the question is simple. And Coach Cal promised this once upon a time, and you and I love that moment. He said, Quade Green will have a 30-point game. Promise mm -hmm. you that take take that bet to the house that's it <laughs> and uh so we asked the question will quad green get his 30 point game that cal promised last year he had academic uh yep. issues that kind of sidelined him he said this year he's got a new slate uh he's ready to be the most important player uh that's one of our favorite tropes not the best not the player best. on the team not the best the not most the important <laughs> yeah the mip not and the not hard improved. soul per se yeah. Or the most talented, but no. the most important. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so here's the timeline of Quaddy Green. According to, to I, I, I dug this back up. And so mm. this is this is my research I did right before this. Uh, in March 2018, Kentucky loses at Florida. It's the last yep. regular season game of the year for, for Kentucky. 
Um, and this was two over two seasons ago now. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cal says that Quaddy Green needs to conquer himself, and he's due for a twenty-five to thirty-point game. Like it, the, the the phrase you use was conquer himself. Like if he can conquer mm-hmm. himself, basically what he was saying is like he's in his own head. Just let loose, Quaddy. Conquer your demons, and you will score thirty points. So we looked at each other like, wow, that's pretty bold. Uh, maybe Cal is seeing something in practice that we're not seeing. Whatever. Uh, Kentucky goes on to play six more games. They play the conference tournament. They, they play in the NCAA tournament. Um, obviously they don't win in the NCAA tournament. So they, they, they get six more games in tape in mm-hmm. those six games, Quaddy green combined to score 28 points. <laughs> so, <laughs> he did not get 30. In fact, he did not even get 30 combined in six games. Uh, then he, the following season, he scores more than 15 points. Once he only mm-hmm. plays nine games for Kentucky and transfers into the 2018, 2019 season transfers. Uh, then gets to Washington, has a, a few 20-point games, Yep, gets close. He's getting close. And then in January, as you said, academically ineligible, season over. That's it. So we, we are still waiting. Uh, this will be three years running for the Quaddy Green 30-point game. That is what, something we are circling. And the real reason we asked the question is because what is the response from Coach Cal on Twitter? Because Coach Cal, he does like to have his guys. And when his guys have their moments, he likes to celebrate those moments. So if Quade does have that 30-point game, we just want to make sure he's alerted and he celebrates properly. Yeah, I just want to make sure great. like Cal like quote tweets the, the headline or whatever just says, told you. I'm yeah, sure. told you so. <laughs> Take that. Three years later. <laughs> Take that. Uh, keep an eye on that one, folks. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Well, Quade Green... He's got a new slate. He's back for Washington. Uh, he's a player to watch. Should we get to number 95? Because Please. I think this is uh, one of the biggest turns in, in, in favor, probably one of the most unexpected turns as we talk about bag dropping and young mm-hmm. coaches that are trying to make an angel for themselves. But Josh Pastner, mm-hmm. baby face, the, uh, the decision to basically be beloved in Atlanta. He was helping people vote um, out in the streets, you know, canvassing people, uh, wearing a mask, you know, doing all the things like being – you know, uh, I gotta be a honest. Public Scott, leader can of the can I stop you right there? Yeah, what does canvassing people mean? I don't know. I, I heard I guess that a lot. And like, yeah. all I just picture is like, you're taking like a canvas that you paint on and yes, just like and running you're sketching up to people, people. And covering the earth. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like you're kidnapping them. Like you're throwing a canvas over them and like, what, what it, I, I've never really understood. Well, That's one we of those do, things we, that I just not along <laughs> and then I'm too scared to ask, but screw it. I'm going to ask you now. <laughs> no, I mean, it's definitely, I think exactly what you said. It's just kidnapping people, taking them to the polls <laughs> <laughs> and then letting them go. So Josh Pastor's doing that. Uh, and anyways, he, he's got the good favor. It seems in Atlanta from the Georgia tech fans. He had the uh, scandal with a friend of the program, literally a friend of the program that was, you yeah. know, doing some impermissible things that he kind of got over that wave. And now uh, like I said, he's baby face and Georgia tech seems to have some positive momentum and that's where we are with Josh Pastner. So that's, it's basically just a Josh Pastner update. Josh Pastner giving off some serious good guy vibes. Uh, yes. He's, his, it was his right hand man. I believe Eric Ravino, the, yes. the like head assistant coach or whatever uh, at Georgia tech was the guy who's responsible for uh, the charge the 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 uh movement to get the ncaa to basically declare election day to be like a dead day where there's no Mm -hmm. practicing no games no anything so all the all the athletes would have the opportunity to go vote uh this was josh pastner's the guy on josh pastner's staff uh, eric Mm -hmm. Rubino. so um there's that and then also georgia as we know became like a pivotal state in the election so like that was that's cool that that mattered as well so uh but then meanwhile we, we have to point out that this is your five for pastner at georgia tech and he's 65 and 67 at mm. Georgia Tech tape. Mm. So uh, also good guy vibes in that. Yeah, sense. very good guy vibes. Yeah. That's what we mean good by baby face. That yeah. That's uh I, I I I see the future, and the future says, Josh Pastner, thank you for your help with the election, but please pack up your bags and get the hell out of here. Well, he, he's he's doing the even he's taking the good guy move even further. This year he says that they will run non-contact practices for the remainder of the season. Yeah. Uh, that means no five on five, no starters for a scout team, which is like the veganism of coaching philosophy. <laughs> yes. Basically we're not going to practice, uh, because we're terrified. We'll roll the balls out and we'll play those games, but it, it's a very good guy move. Yeah. It's player safety. It's player safety first. So much so that we don't no. even play. We don't even play the game. Jo- uh, uh, Josh Pastner is the heavy favorite to win good guy of the year uh, yeah. at the end of the year. Cause he's, he's yeah. Between the election and like taking coronavirus seriously and all that, like he, he is a good, he is becoming a good man, but also right Georgia before Tech, very so, yeah, yeah. Also Georgia Tech. 
<laughs> gonna miss the tournament he's gonna get fired oh man uh fun time so that's 95 moving on number 94 um this is this should be higher i mean we, this really belongs this this might be my number one this is something near and dear to my heart uh i i am very frustrated by this and i i was talking earlier about how i i just want chaos and content this fits the bill mm. uh 94 on the list is the fact that we are long overdue for a college basketball point shaving scandal tape mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we and very very long overdue i might add uh the the first notable one was 1950 yep. city college of new york the only team to ever win the nit and the ncaa tournament in the same year uh they they had the point shaving situation i guess we'll call it um that kind of undermined the mm-hmm. legacy of that team uh the only team to ever shave points win the nit and win the NCAA tournament unbelievable and they were like never the again ever? Yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and all those i mean they had prison time that was served because of this there were players that were on cc and y that never got to play in the pros because they were banned from the game forever yeah. it was pretty detrimental and then kentucky was also involved later uh ralph beard was one mm-hmm. of the guys that was involved um, after the yeah. fact so yeah that was the that's the one when people think of point shaving college basketball they think 1950 that's and we joked one. about that being like this is the year the Baylor's first time being ranked number one since 1950 right. uh and like you know this is the, the year where we talk about 1950 there's that one there's another one in the 50s like it was it was a little longer the uh excuse me uh the Dixie Classic yeah was that was this tournament with yeah that North was Carolina, North Carolina North Carolina State yeah. Yeah, it was, it was all sorts of teams that were taking part in that. It was and, the first time that bag dropping had gone too far, so much so that the people involved were like, "We have to shut this down. This is yeah. too big. This is even too big for us." And we're big time college basketball. Tulane was the other one. Tulane I think in eighty five had 85. one. They shut the yeah. program down for yep. a few years and then had yep. to bring it back. Uh, dude, don't forget Boston College in seventy nine mm. when Bruce Pearl was the mascot. Never forget Bruce Pearl was the mascot <laughs> in the nineteen seventy nine like. <laughs> Bruce Pearl is Forrest Gump for NCAA scandals. Just like yes. wherever he goes, he's yes. just there's just like it's chaos like, it's, around him. Yeah, they're like, what's happening in the NCAA world? Well, is Bruce Pearl there? And he's or, like, I had there. no idea this was happening. I just happened to be there. And mm. uh, yeah, Bruce Pearl was literally, literally the Boston College Eagle. <laughs> he needs there to get back in that. I mean, and he's been a mascot uh, at every school he's been at too. So it's like, he's lived up to that. Yeah. Um, and then there's obviously uh 1994 Arizona state, 1995 yeah. Northwestern, Northwestern, 1994 uh, Western university. When Nick Nolte was on the bench uh, for the dolphins, <laughs> they were shaving points. Uh, was it Butch McCray that was shaving points for them? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Was it, I don't remember. I it was Butch McCray, right? Cause then Butch? he talks, he talks to him. Man, I haven't watched, I haven't watched blue chips in a long ass time, but uh. Anyway, it has basically been it, – it's my understanding that the last time this happened was ni- Northwestern 1995, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the, yes. the, do, do you yeah. remember the, the, last the last time profile. it got caught? Yeah, the last exactly. time someone got caught. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I guess gambling is becoming big in college basketball or in, in all sports. Um, mm. we, the, college basketball is corrupt to high hell, as we all know. And I just feel like it, it, it's been 25 years. I feel like we're due. And I just wanted to point that out that uh, – I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's the next move. Maybe we pivot away from bag dropping and we pivot towards mm. the, the point shaving situation. And you know? Can we just point out, like, at least I have to say this, just thinking about the actual aspect of the game to be able to point shave with one it not being noticeable and two being able to secure the outcome. Like some of the guys that win games and then shave it so that they only win by eight points. Mm-hmm. That to me is an actual skill at some level. Yeah. And I can't believe that like the, the players are that mastered of the craft that they're able to, to work this out to make it work. And also with DraftKings Sportsbook and the world being Barstool is a sports book. It just seems like right now there's a lot of people talking about lines and things and more familiar than maybe when you and yeah. I were coming up definitely and watching basketball. So it's yeah, going to be point, talked about more point shaving and college basketball were uh, just two peas in a pod for the longest time. And it was, yeah. it was just when you thought point shaving, you thought college basketball. Now, it's it's that's not the case anymore so I'm, mm. i don't know i'm just saying just keep an eye on that just keep I mean, an eye on that folks <laughs> it, it, it was funny like chris collinsworth on sunday night brought up you know he was like was that the spread and al's like yeah you dummy like is it like as if yeah. you don't know the spread yeah. then you're an yeah. absolute buffoon and i think that's where we are and if you know that if everybody knows the spread maybe it's harder to point shave right yeah. if everyone's like it's eight and a half and these guys are doing that maybe maybe it stops Good, it. that's a great point great point but uh, yeah anyway just wanted to point that out Point shaving. We're we're long without the radar. Put that on your radar. Yeah, something to look for. (laughs) 
That's it. Uh, number 93, this is a good one that you brought mm-hmm. up as we were going through the list. We're, we're obviously, as we're going through, trying to hit certain teams as we're going you know, through our top 100. So we get to 93, you look at me, and you say this, and it was pretty simple, three words. Richmond's top defense, mm-hmm. the Richmond Spiders. Uh, Andy Katz had them, I think, number 25 in his you know, power 36 that he puts out. You know, they had their best record in 10 years last year. The Spiders have a history of being a great basketball program in general. They got a lot of juniors coming back. Uh, they are actually one of those teams that is loaded full of veterans that are coming back. Got a lot of guys coming back. Got a lot of guys coming back. <laughs> uh, but the Richard Spiders, their defense, right, at number 93. Let me say their names. I have I know nothing about their <laughs> skill set or how it's going to translate to yeah. high, high-level college basketball, but these are some names that are coming back for Richmond. Mm. Uh, so I was reading this thing on NCAA.com that uh, – Richmond apparently had the best defensive efficiency for the months, big 10 stat of the day uh, for the months of February and March last season. They, so mm. they, the last two months of the season, they had the hottest defense in the country, according to, to some metric, whatever. And as, as we said, they bring a lot of guys back. So the thought is Richmond's going to have a great defense, right? Like maybe, you know, everyone's going to talk about Baylor's defense, Virginia's defense. There are a lot of great defenses out there. Uh, but maybe Richmond might actually have the best defense. Yeah. But not so fast, says Ken Palm. <laughs> Ken Palm's preseason rankings. Richmond is ranked, their defense, according to Ken Palm's algorithm, is number 76. So I don't know what I don't know what to make of this. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, the algorithms are we have we have <laughs> contrasting algorithms here. Yeah, we're we're lost in the analytics. We don't even know where to say all, all I can say is that Richmond last year beat Wisconsin, they beat Vanderbilt, they beat Boston College. Those were some big wins. They were guaranteed to go to the NCAA tournament. They finished 14 and 4. Uh, yep. in the eight ten, so they they had twenty four and seven overall. Chris Mooney's a good coach. Um, uh, I think he's one of those guys that maybe is not familiar in the national landscape. So, uh, but Nick Sherrod tore his ACL in practice, uh, and he's their best three point shooter. So that's so he's not back. He's not back, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. So that's one name to know that will not be back on the floor for Richmond. So that maybe takes them down maybe one peg yeah. as to what we're talking about their preview, but uh they're going to be a good team they're going to be a fun team to watch and they play together and uh but are they the team to beat in the a10 dayton fans oh. say big fat thumbs down no they're not dayton and still we, is. yeah we are frequent flyers so for now we'll say yeah, sure probably not. but no <laughs> I, I just wanted to point that out the richmond uh the the analytics are, are split the uh mm. the, the stat nerds are the algorithms don't know what to make of richmond's defense but uh don't yeah. be surprised if richmond is is one of the best defensive teams in the country i guess and we're gonna pull that out later when someone calls us out about the show and says that we weren't talking about the actual you know analytics or the basketball or whatever we're just gonna be like titus number 93 richmond's mm-hmm. top defense have yep. you watched him just focus uh, in speaking of analytics uh here's the number for you to <laughs> chew on take four uh mm. that is the number of years that brady manic has been in oklahoma uh <laughs> at number 92 I just I, I have no commentary for this. I just wanted to point it out to the world that Brady Manick is still at Oklahoma and he still looks like Larry Bird. And yeah, that's like really it. Like I don't re- we don't really need to like analyze his game or analyze Oklahoma how they're going to be this season. Mm. Uh, just the guy the guy you remember the big tall white dude that was playing with Trey Young like the only guy that could hit anything. Mm-hmm. Trey Young would get triple teamed and he'd throw it to the corner and there's this big lanky white dude that. Had a mustache and yeah, looked yeah, exactly like Larry Bird yeah. and looked like he was straight out of French Lick. Well, that's that guy, man. that guy's a senior, so uh, drink in one more season of him just looking like Larry Bird. That's all. Yeah, I mean. and if you were on Twitter right now, go to Brady Manick's Twitter and just look at his avatar. It is a picture of him, <laughs> yeah. and it's the most ridiculous photo you've ever seen of a human being. His hair is like sticking straight up all over the place. He literally looks like Larry Bird reincarnated and it is a joy to watch him play the game. He's leaned into the bit. I mean, he shaved his head at one point um, yeah. to, to focus on basketball, but at the end of the day, he's having a good time. And uh, yeah, we always enjoy Brady Manic. So we're happy to have him back. Brady Manic officially back. Stamp it down. <laughs> uh, should we get to number 91? Number or is there 91 anything? All right. Number, num- yeah. number 91 is uh, Jimmy V voice. Rutgers basketball. Your family. Your religion and the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And number ninety-one, Rutgers basketball raked in the AP poll for the first time since nineteen seventy-eight. Uh, all the guys apparently have a personal chip on their shoulder. Uh, that's my favorite thing Unfinished about reading. business. Yeah, yeah. If you read about Rutgers in the offseason, that's what they all say. They have a chip on their shoulder. They're trying to make some noise. They want to let people know. The last time the Rutgers was ranked this high in the AP poll, they made the Sweet Sixteen. They have made the Final Four before. There is history. There is basketball in New Jersey. Rutgers has a chance to make a run in the Big Ten. 
number 91 Rutgers basketball. I guess, I guess the, the big point I would make is that losing to Rutgers isn't embarrassing anymore. In mm. fact, I don't know if we're there yet. where beating Rutgers is cause for celebration, but we're close. We're close. Mm. Like if you, if you went on the road at Rutgers, uh, and, and you celebrate in the in the locker room afterwards. Not a big I, deal. I'm, I'm not making fun of you for that anymore. No, of course, exactly. It's, Which it's is crazy def- to say out loud, you know? <laughs> it it's a good be, win. It's a quality yeah, win. Yeah, it used to be like if Rutgers got within like 15 of you, the bus ride back home or the plane ride back home, you're just like, we suck. <laughs> yeah, or, or it was like you look at the happen? schedule and you're like, oh, Iowa plays Rutgers. I don't know. I'm not sure I want to watch Luca today. You know, I might let that one yeah. slide. And now it's like, oh, that's a that's losing a to game. Rutgers was so notable that I remember the 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 uh, Wisconsin team that beat Kentucky and then lost to Duke in the title game, mm-hmm. the 2015 team. They lost to Rutgers that season, mm-hmm. and I I know that because like that is more memorable to me than their Final Four run. <laughs> I was like, how the hell did that team lose to Rutgers? I think yeah. they had guys sick. I think I think Kaminsky was out for the game. But. Well, you just have to – Rutgers is basically, uh, for all time, they are Bryce Drew's Vanderbilt team that went 0-18. You know what yeah. I mean? That's just how people view them in their head. They're like, they're not even going to uh, win a conference game. But they have good. guys back, Tate. Uh, yep. Geo Baker, Ron Harper Jr. back. Um, yep. they, they are back. Uh, as you said, they, 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 they won 20 games last year. That's they've done that like one other time. They were going to win more than 20 if we got a Big mm-hmm. Ten tournament in the state tournament. So I'm counting it as 21 or two. We're going to pretend they won 22 or something, uh, which is the most they've, they've won since 1983. Uh, and they bring some guys back. So they're going to be, yeah, they're, they, they, I, I'm trying to figure out where, what tier Big Ten they're on. They're, I think they're tier three. I, I think, think tier three. I think, I, th- I think they're at the top of tier but three. Exactly. Like yeah. they could edge up into tier two, which they have a real chance to make a, you know, NCAA yeah. tournament run, which is always <laughs> yeah. nice. And that's where you want to be. They're, they're not basketball. in first class. They're not in business class. They're in coach, but they got an extra they're, row seat. No, they're they, Delta they got, Comfort. They're Delta they're Comfort. Delta Comfort. All right. That's where there they are. Wreck his basketball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. Number 90 on our list is uh, a man that we got to see up close and personal when he was starting his coaching career. Uh, when we went and saw him coach at Pepperdine, he, he is from the Mark Godfrey coaching tree. Mark Godfrey mm. is, is spreading his seed across this great country. <laughs> his, his coaching tree is <laughs> sprouting everywhere, <laughs> sprouting everywhere. <laughs> the man we speak of is Mo Williams. He is now the head coach at Alabama state. Um, and I guess that's really all there is to say. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. So Mo Williams, we saw him at a Pepperdine game a couple years back, and it was Colby Ross versus Lamine Janae. We talked about it on the draft mm-hmm. preview with KOC. Colby and Ross, back. Lamine Janae, not back. Not back. So <laughs> get those together, and then we'll come back to this. So basically Mo Williams says then that year that he wants to get into coaching because he wants to be a head coach. And we see him at halftime. He's eating a hot dog and we were kind of laughing about it. And we were like, man, it seems like Mo Williams is regretting that decision. Fast forward two years later, he's at Alabama state. He seems super hyped up. The HBCU community is all behind him. He is saying he wants to make a difference at Alabama state. He also said my favorite thing, which is LeVar ball made this happen with Lonzo ball speaking it into existence. That was one of our favorite things in the world. Mo Williams talking about his philosophy as a coach. This was his quote said, I'm big on energy. I'm big on putting things in the universe. Um, I just like the idea of Bo Williams sitting over there eating a hot dog, just thinking about what he wants his team to do at Alabama State. And uh, that will forever. The reason the hot dog thing is so funny. We, keep talking <laughs> we don't know about why it's so funny. But it's it so funny because uh, we, it, it's just like a stark contrast. Like we're used to going to the big time college basketball games yes. and, and just, you know, hardly getting any access to coaches or players or anything of the sort. Yeah. They, they sprint off the floor in the locker room and, and and just to be at Pepperdine and, and it's halftime and you and I go to stay in the concession line to grab like some M&Ms or whatever it is we were getting. And Mo Williams is like three people in front of us and he's waiting in line and he's an assistant coach on the team. Mm. And he like left the locker room huddle like stand in line. He stood in line. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't, yeah. Which means that the team didn't even manager. have a meal. Like yeah, they he didn't, didn't have a meal a that manager night. manager to go get a hot dog. He didn't like work it out with Pepperdine to like, yo, at halftime, like float me a hot dog, whatever. He's like, all right, uh, got, you give the speech to the team. I'm going to slip out the back door, go stand in line for 10 minutes, pay a dollar 50 for a hot dog <laughs> and stand in the corner. And You're actually hundred percent right. That actually gives me more hope in him. He's like, he's gritty. He he's just a man does of the him. people. Yeah, yeah. He does it for himself. He doesn't can you imagine like that's what him. I mean? Could you imagine like being at the Dean Dome and it's halftime, a Carolina Duke and like Sean May standing in line? Get, uh, bad example. Never mind. <laughs> Sean, Sean, don't don't listen to that. Bad example. <laughs> I, uh, I actually think I could totally picture that that Sean May is in, in line for 
for hot dog. Yeah, uh, Mo Williams at Alabama State. Uh, Beef here's Master your, Franks. They're here's the your best. Alabama State scouting report. Ken Palm has Alabama State at number 352 <laughs> out of 357 on his list. Matt Norlander, CBS, who who does his uh, number one through uh, 357 power rankings to start the season, whatever. He has uh, – Alabama State at 332. So a little discrepancy there, Tate. Where does Alabama State fall? Is it 352, 332? Somewhere I in the think, middle, maybe. I, I, I'm going to say 340 for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. As I made my big board, I had him <laughs> exactly at 340. Uh, no, I just – I always think it's great that, one, he's a head coach, and, two, that we have the stories of Mo Williams and Mark yeah. Gottfried. Because can you imagine Mo Williams just running his own team now, thinking about what Dude, he's learned I, from Mark Gottfried? In all seriousness, you know, also keep an eye on – as you said, it's an HBCU. Uh, this is kind of the, the new – trendy thing with a lot of recruits yep. is this yep. movement to try to mccure makers we'll talk about maybe a little later uh mm. going to howard is maybe starting a trend of guys going to maybe mo williams maybe he taps mm. into something i don't mm. know let's keep mm. an eye on it folks mm. uh number 89 this one should also be higher this is this is another cause near and dear to my heart along with there's point shaving that's super important to me uh this is also super important to me if if fans cannot go to game state will the grand canyon students still be able to trip balls twice a week throughout the winter. How are they going to pull this off? Because yes. <laughs> they're, they're still going to do it. Okay. The answer is yes. And I've done my research and it turns out the Havocs, as they call yeah. themselves, these are the Grand Canyon faithful. These are the fans that we saw that we were convinced that these people must be on something else outside of college their basketball's own. greatest cult. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the vigor that they have for the sport is unlike anything you've ever seen. Maybe they have been brainwashed by Jerry Colangelo. We're not quite sure, but they do love Grand Canyon basketball. But the Havocs will be allowed inside GCU Arena this men's basketball season, but at a lower capacity amid the coronavirus pandemic. So that means lower capacity, even more lit. That means that you have more pressure. You as have more, more room. Havoc. You have yeah, more, room. more space, around and then- but you have more responsibility. And uh, I think it, what you're asking, it just is only going to go up to 10. Like, I think that <laughs> I thought they were on 10, but they're going to go to 10 now. Yeah. Every person uh, that goes to these games, wow. you, you now have to bring energy for like five people. You represent five people that couldn't be there. So you have to yeah oh my god we're, we're not even kidding like these fans these havocs they were outside the arena in line going mad as if like something was happening right then and there outside they weren't even inside the game yet another team gonzaga and tennessee were playing and they were just going crazy, going crazy. without any stake in the game that, like these are the havocs have, this is what they do it's i want to see the havocs tryouts like who gets priority for for getting to go to these games now um you know, like, like, are they doing a tryout where it's like, all right, here's it, this weekend, come trip balls with us, whoever can last the, 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 the last 200 students standing, you guys get it to go to, you guys get to represent us in the student section. No, I think they just walk into a room for their orientation. And then there's just like <laughs> Jerry Colangelo's face in the screen. And it's like Mugatu and it just starts spinning around and then you get hypnotized. Then you get canvassed. Belie- you get yeah, canvassed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they canvass you and you <laughs> become... <laughs> A Grand Canyon fan for life. Also, Bryce Drew is the coach at Grand Bryce Canyon. Bryce Drew is the coach. Yeah, we should the point Drew that family's out. out there. Uh, Dan Marley got fired and then promptly sued the school. And said, <laughs> you, can't, you can't fire me. I'm Dan Marley. <laughs> yeah. This is why you hired me. <laughs> yeah. What? So, uh, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on what's going on uh, over the desert there, because uh, yeah, I was it's gonna be about madness. That, but, but I'm glad. I'm glad some students will be able to go to the game. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the Southwest part of the United States, uh, we have to ask this question with number eighty-eight. Is San Diego State still undefeated? Mm. The answer may surprise you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a little journalism trick I do. You just Anytime you ask a question, just say, yeah, the answer may surprise it's you. It's not what you think. It's, it's not what you think. Uh, mm. San Diego State undefeated all of last year, uh, excluding the games they lost. Um, <laughs> America's last undefeated team. <laughs> They hung a banner, and <laughs> that's what doomed them. The, the Viejas Arena, they, they win the, the Mountain West, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they're in. They're, they're mm-hmm. in the Mountain West. Mm-hmm. And then they hung the banner before, their, before the regular season was even over. They had yep. the banner up. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'll say it. I think this, the tournament getting canceled, nobody benefited from it more than San Diego State because I did not like the direction San Diego State was going. To, to, we, we went to the last game. We went to the yeah. final game uh, 
at San Diego State. And I, I, the, I, I wasn't feeling I wasn't feeling where I was headed for the Aztec. No, one of the last few sporting events we were going to uh, in college basketball spaces for sure was San Diego State. Uh, we went down there. We celebrated the Kawhi Leonard, uh, you know, just love that they have down in that place. We celebrated Viejas Arena and the history that was there. Great we arena. Great the arena. show. We joined yeah. the show. You know, we talked great about Grand Canyon's section, fans. Yeah. Like, yep. they had a great student section that was normal, obviously not tripping. And, you know, we had this beautiful time, but you and I looked at each other and we said, they've peaked, they've yeah. hit the mountaintop and now they're on the other side. They never had to see the other side because the other side is reality right now, which is Malachi Flynn, go ahead and stamp it gone. He's, uh, he's, not he's, back. he's gone, <laughs> not going back. Uh, and then I looked up the, I just looked, typed in San Diego state basketball. Cause I'm like, you know, let's get my preview going. Here's the first headline that came up respected computer metric projects SDSU <laughs> at number 44. Ooh. And that answers the question, are they still undefeated? No, no they are done. They've already the, lost. <laughs> the respected computer, computer metric says nay, nigh, whatever you need to say, they're done. Uh, and unfortunately, because I love the Aztecs. Uh, I had a great time, uh, great yeah. arena, uh, but I, I think what's best for San Diego It's State, over. It's over. Yeah, what, what's best for San Diego State this season if they lose early? Because the last thing San Diego <laughs> State needs is to be like 10-0, and 0, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, my God, it's happening again. Because I want to remind you, San Diego State fans, nothing really happened last year. <laughs> yeah. Is Wetzel it, back? Wetzel's got to be quote, back. Wetzel, he has to be, right? Or, yeah, no, he was a senior. Did he was? Senior night? Okay. I don't know. Okay. This, <laughs> I can't this remember. Is why, this is why our preview is not a, you know. <laughs> this is why these are things and not yeah. teams. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mitchell's back, right? Yeah, Matt Mitchell? Yeah. 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 He's back. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, See, it State, works out in the end. You learn. You learn as you go. I, not undefeated though. They've already lost the headline game. I feel like they need to lose the first game out of the gate. Get the get the pressure off, and then mm. and then now you can not have to worry about uh, being twenty two and zero or whatever it is they were before they they lost last year. Uh, number eighty seven. Who you want to talk about unanswerable questions? Mm. I here's a question for you, Tate. Is Florida State officially a basketball school? Mm. You're defending ACC regular season champions. Uh, Shout out to all the Duke fans that are going to remind me that there is no regular season ACC champion, even though you have ACC regular season banners hanging in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, your ACC tournament. That's a new season. opinion, by the way. That, yeah. that that happened when they started losing the regular season started, and started yeah, winning the yeah, tournament. And then they changed their whole opinion. Yeah, okay. yeah, of course. Just want to make sure we all know that. Uh, uh, and then Florida State is your ACC tournament champions with the most impressive ACC tournament run. In con- Ever. The, the, the most impressive conference Ever. tournament run of did all Did not time. dribble, did not shoot. Won still won all. a title. Yeah. <laughs> still, still got a trophy. Uh, so it's rolling for Florida State. They got Scotty Barnes. Uh, he's a guy that's coming in. Uh, we're, we're doing the thing where we just list names now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scotty Barnes is a freshman, five star recruit, best recruit Six in Florida nine. State history. Yeah. Um, Leonard Hamilton is, is the Florida State's going to have like two, what, top 10 picks maybe? Mm-hmm. Patrick yeah. Williams and, and Vassal. Yep. Yeah. They're going to have two top 10 picks probably. They won the ACC last year. They're, they're, kind of favored with Virginia and Duke and Carol. It's like they're in tier one. They're in tier mm-hmm. one of the ACC this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, their football team is garbage and has been for a while. I ask you, Tate, you're the ACC expert. Is Florida State a basketball school? I would say on the record right now, looking at Leonard Hamilton, smiling at me, thinking about Coach Ham and what he's been able to do, dating back to, you know, his early days at FSU to when he was winning those once, you know, once every five year games in Cameron Indoor, the Florida State would upset with like Derwin Kitchen or whoever it was Mm -hmm. to now where they're a powerhouse. And now they're to be reckoned with. Now, when Roy Williams talks about the other coaches in the league, he says Leonard Hamilton. And, you know, same with Coach K. He's like, and of course, Coach Hamilton. He's in that group. He's in that, you know, top tier oligarchy in the ACC. And that is not the case when you look at the football team. It was when Jimbo Fisher was there. Obviously, before that with Bobby Bowden, it was a totally different tier. They were undeniably a football school. But Coach Hamilton is consistency. Coach Hamilton is basking in his own glow right now. He knows that he's the man. He knows that he's got the mock turtleneck look down. He mm-hmm. knows that he's got the gangster mentality set into, you know, set in stone, like where he's basically Frank Lucas. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He is blue magic. Uh, and he is down there in Tallahassee. And the answer is simple. The answer is yes. Florida State is a basketball school. Stamp it. Put it out to the world. Uh, they ha- they did come back to being a football school by beating North Carolina, but that says a lot about them being a football school. So that's why they're a basketball school. Uh, F- Florida State and Virginia. Mm. 
are they the are they what duke and north carolina used to be it's starting they're, to feel that they're way. they're the new darlings right they are it's starting to feel that way where every preseason we go in uh virginia and florida state no matter who's on the roster no matter the, the, the facts don't matter other than <laughs> tony bennett and leonard hamilton are the coaches mm-hmm. so we got to put them towards the top of the acc and duke and carolina are just kind of getting i don't know if Florida State has owned Florida and they've owned the recruits down there in the sense that like one of the headlines I have here, Seminoles only ranked Florida's team in the AP, AP preseason poll, right? They own Florida. They're able to get guys like Johnny Isaac. They're able to go to IMG and Leonard Hamilton can sell the dream of like, you can come to the ACC, but you don't have to go to Duke and have, you know, all that pressure and also have, you know, to compete with three other five stars, Scotty Barnes, come here and be the guy. And like Johnny writing, Isaac was perfect. Like he went in plug and play freshman one done. Yeah. Boom. He's gone. The writing was on the wall when Andrew Wiggins final two choices were Florida state and Kansas. Yes. And uh, at the time I remember thinking that is insane. Like why would he choose Florida state? What, what the hell's going on there? And I, I think his parents are from. Florida yeah. Mitchell. State, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that, I guess that, that factored in, but at the same time, isn't it funny now that if Andrew Wiggins would have gone to Florida state, maybe he didn't go to Florida state. Cause he's like, I, that would look weird. I don't want to be the one guy that goes to Florida state. And now, mm-hmm. Looking back, you wouldn't have been the one guy, Wiggins. You no, you, you would have had Malik Beasley. You would have uh-huh. had a bunch of guys that were there with you. And, I mean, the, Florida State's the team classically that you – we talk about the airport test and every single other old journalist says that. And when they walk through an airport, you say, I do not want to play Florida State. Yep. That team has, like, three seven-footers that I don't even understand. They are the all-time. All every are, single year they, they all have the touch airport. and they are all 7'3". Yeah. <laughs> every single year they are the airport test team. Uh, yeah. The Florida State symbols. Uh, so while we're on it, mm. asking. I, by the way, I agree with you. Basketball school, one hundred percent. Basketball, definitely basketball school at this point. Uh, while we're on it, we we should we should rip through some other programs because there's some interesting things happening in college football. And by mm-hmm. that I mean the Indiana Hoosiers are a goddamn wagon right now, Tate. Yep, yep. The Indiana Hoosiers are uh, they they've beaten Penn State and Michigan already this season. That you you, you want to talk about throwing out stats that hasn't happened since blank. That is Indiana 1950. football right now. Yeah, you just hit you just hit refresh on the Indiana football Twitter. It's like we haven't done this since eighteen sixty four. Eventually, they're gonna say we've never done this. We've never done this. Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be no more senses. It's just yeah. we've never done this ever. Um, so I guess we start there. Is Indiana a football school now, Tate? Mm, I think so, and I think that it happened <laughs> uh, overnight. No, I mean it is funny. Like it does feel like you get tabbed these things, right? This is a this is a segment that you and I kind of did in, in jest as we were sitting around watching these teams and watching these games. But now it's a fair question because you go through it because you want to be identified at, at least in my mind as a Carolina person when Florida won the two national championships in basketball, and then also had Tim Tebow was winning in football. Mm-hmm. That was the dream, right? It was like you can be both. You can be a basketball powerhouse and you can be a football mm-hmm. powerhouse. And of course, like Florida, all, it wasn't really the case there and everything fell apart, but they at one time had both Indiana. I think if they had to choose what they were, we know what the choice is. They choose right. basketball school a hundred times out of a hundred, but if they really leaned into being a, being a football school, I think they have less heartache and I think they have more fun. I mean, just look at Indiana fans right now as they watch the games, they don't expect to win. So they have this it's great so time. Fun. And usually yeah. when you go to an Indiana game, we've been in assembly hall together. It's stuffy it's not because, fun. because they're like, we better win. And if we yeah. don't, we need a new coach to get us back to winning. And I think it's more fun. The only, to yeah. Like the only time it's like actually just unbridled joy, fun <laughs> to be an Indiana basketball fan is the Tuesday night ACC big 10 challenge game. If it's Duke or Carolina. That's yeah. And you know, you're going to win at home. Yeah. And you just get absolutely based and yeah. lose your mind the entire night and the Hoosiers win. And that's, that's fun. But like mm-hmm. even every other game, even if they win, you're clinching your the whole game, and like, ah, are we really gonna lose to Wisconsin again? I can't, help, you know. Yeah, Brad that, Davis that, is taking yeah. charges. Yeah, and then they it, win, and it's more like relief than fun or whatever. Indiana football, I have been to more joy. Indiana. I, I would say I've been to more Indiana football games than any other school in the country, including Ohio State. And I've been to countless Ohio State games, but I went to Indiana football games growing up all the time. Uh, for free i would show up that people were handing out tickets my dad my dad if you go to an indiana football game with him now he will still tell the same joke that like when i was going to school mark you'd have extra tickets you put them on your wind you put two tickets on your windshield for someone to grab and go in and when you come back out after the game there'd be five on the windshield (laughs) (laughs) that's duke football yeah Uh, yeah, uh my dad if you go to a game with him now he'll still he'll, he'll always say that but um 
Indiana football was always that. It was like, this is the fun part. We're just here to have fun. We're not mm-hmm. even paying attention to the score. If we score mm-hmm. a touchdown against Ohio State or Michigan or Penn State, that's awesome. Like the fact that we even score a touchdown. So now that they're winning, uh, it is it is really, really cool. And um, But be that as it may, they're still basketball. So they got to beat Ohio State or they have to like go to a BCS Bowl for me to actually take it seriously. As a yeah, what would be – I was going to say, how long do they have to sustain to yeah. be a football school? It would probably be five years. It'd they got Ohio be... State in a couple weeks. You beat Ohio State, I'll give that you – That counts for five years. Yeah, yeah. I'll, that I'll, counts I'll for stay. five years of sustained winning. Officially football. Uh, my brother and I go to the Ohio State-Indiana football game every single year, whether no matter where it's at, Bloomington or Columbus. And every single year, Ohio State's favored by a ton. And they're mm-hmm. probably going to be favored by a lot this year, even though Indiana's pretty good. But – uh. It just, it just, it, it, of course, it works out this way, Tate. That the one year where like the game actually matters, the one year where we might actually have a decent game, fans can't go. Yeah. Man. <laughs> 2020. Here we are. 2020. Uh, what other schools are there out there that we have to decide? Let, let's just run, through, let's just go through them and let's uh, label North them. Carolina. Okay. Maybe. So this, uh, you missed the tournament. You were absolute garbage last year in basketball. Now all of a sudden you have. Mm. A decent football team. Yeah, seven national champions uh, championships to boast for the university on the basketball side. Should have been a national championship in 1997 if it wasn't for the Bobby Bowden curse with uh, Mac Brown going on. So uh, North Carolina is trying to prove the Florida philosophy of the mid 2000s, which is we can be both. They have Mac Brown. They have Roy Williams. Mac Brown's won a national championship, obviously with Texas, not with North Carolina, but he has the pedigree. Roy. You know, three national championships. Obviously, we all know what Roy Williams is going to do with that program. He said that they're a hundred times uh, more focused and ready to go than they were last year, which I don't know what that means, uh, and I don't know what was going on last year. But I think North Carolina, when they were ranked number five, if you if you walked around Chapel Hill and you asked people, they'd say, "I'm all in for football." So mm-hmm. in that moment in time, they were locked in because Mac Brown has the love of the community, right? People love Mac Brown. They want Mac to be back. So Make people the call. are locked in. Make the call, Tate. Both. The answer is both. <laughs> the answer is uh, both. I, I, North Carolina is a basketball school. So of course. But I, for right now, with and, Mac and, Brown, both. And if anyone wants to dispute that and you want to uh, – No one's going to dispute point, that. I know. But if you want to point out that North Carolina got their teeth kicked in last year often, I'll make this point, Tate. Mm. I genuinely believe that the North Carolina football team would also lose by 25 points if they played Ohio state at home. So (laughs) in that regard, they're kind of on level playing field there. I would actually love to see Sam Howell play Justin Fields just, just to see how far away it is from like, cause cause I know Ohio state, when I watch Ohio state, I'm kind of like, how are these not professional players? Why, why is everything so polished and everyone's so much better than everyone else? So I would just like to see it. You know, it's kind of like I remember North Carolina played South Carolina in 2013 when they had uh, Jadavion and Clowney, and they went down there with Bryn Renner, and I was at that game, at Michael Wilbon at that game, and they wouldn't even throw the ball down the field. Like, they just threw it sideways because they were just like, we don't even want to play this game with them. And I think that's what would happen, but it would be fun to watch. Uh, but I digress. North Carolina both. Uh, is the answer officially? All right. What about uh, next on the list? Michigan. I'm. I'm gonna let's just let's just not yeah. even spend any time. That's t- ten million percent basketball. I'm not even basketball. doing that as a bit. It's it's yeah. basketball. Michigan football has more losing season than bowl wins since uh, Lloyd Carr left. Yeah, Brady Hoke Sugar Bowl win, which I was at that game as well in 2012. That is carrying you through this decade. That is the thing that you point yeah. to to say we beat Virginia Tech when they weren't even at their real best at the time, and that's not no- that's not nothing, but it's definitely not a lot. And John Beeline was running the world, took a team to the final four. We all know Mich- uh, about John Beeline and what he was able to do. There, Michigan so. football and Michigan basketball have the same number of national titles since 1950, Tate. Bang. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. And think about this. The Fab Five should have won one. The Fab Five should have won one of those. So it should be basketball anyway. Here's a good one. Wisconsin. Ooh, Wisconsin is a basketball school. I said barely. This is that that this one's the hardest one to pick. This yeah. one is they're very even. They're both they they I, I'm I'm gonna throw in Oregon here too. I had Oregon next on my list. Oregon and Wisconsin are the same school in sports in the sense that they are both good enough to beat the national champions. Yeah. On any given year, but they're not good enough to be the national champions. Mm. <laughs> mm, seriously. 
That's a great way to put it. Every single year, like pick whoever is the national champion, and you're like, yeah, I could see Oregon, yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah, and, and we've seen them in the title in both game. sports. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And then when they're there, you're kind of like, they're not gonna win. They, you know? they can't win. They're not gonna yeah. win the national. <laughs> they could beat the national champion if this was like a the final four game. game. Yeah, the <laughs> final four game. But they're not gonna win the national championship. That's not yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, I said Wisconsin is barely basketball. Nice, barely by a smidge. Yeah, just because like uh, the football team has lost the last four Rose Bowls they played in and the last four Big Ten title games they played in, and mm. until they change that, I'm giving it to basketball. And Oregon, I did slightly football because I, I, because they, they actually almost did win national titles. They, they, they finished twice. They lost in the title game twice. Yeah, and then in 2001, like the Joey Harrington year, they should have been the team that got sent to the slaughterhouse to play Miami instead of Nebraska. Eric Crouch in Nebraska got to go, and then mm-hmm. Miami wiped the floor with them. That should have mm-hmm. been Oregon's spot. Oregon mm-hmm. should have been killed. Joey by Harrington them. was sitting at home, and he was like, thank God I'm not in that yeah. game. And then Cole yeah. Britton was playing Georgia and was like, why am I in <laughs> this game? <laughs> yeah. uh, who else is there? Like Auburn? Auburn's yeah. still football, right? I think Auburn's definitely football, but I think that Bruce Pearl and Charles Barkley and just the fact that they went to Final Four recently in 2019, the, the most recent Final Four they were in. So there is a push – yeah, and, and then you look at the top guys that they have. Like Okoro is going to be a top ten pick in this draft. That's true. Uh, yeah, I mean they've had. Some I don't top think their picks. football team has been that bad though. Like they've just been they've been a couple steps down from like how, from national title good, but they're not yeah. like it's not like they're putting up like four and eight seasons. Are mm-hmm. they? Are they? No, I, I mean they are. I think no, they're, they're kind of like going to outback bowls and shit. Yeah, no, I mean Gene horrible. Chizik won the championship with Cam, and then that yeah. was a high in and of itself. And then we have the kick six. The kick six was yeah. like another high, renewed high for Auburn football to say, you know, this still rivalry is school. different. Yeah, still, still football a football school. school. Auburn's yeah, a football that? school. Uh, BYU, I'm saying BYU is a football school. BYU because is absolutely a football school because Zach, Zach Wilson, Wilson is, is the best quarterback in the country besides Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence because they're on a different level, but like. That that kid's different. I don't understand it. And yeah. he wears the Jumpman logo like across his face. He's the whitest looking kid you've ever seen, but he is uh, got a cannon. So people forget BYU won a 1984 national title in football. Um, and then the other ones I had that were that we should discuss: Cincinnati, who is ranked in the top ten in football, and Luke Fickle has it going down there. Uh, they if if Fick, if Cincinnati wins 11 games, which is going to be hard because it's a shortened season, but if they win 11 games this year, it'll be the first time in program history of three straight 11 win seasons. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, the basketball program is just kind of in purgatory, stuck in the American with no UConn anymore. And yeah. Greg Marshall, and a, a conference where Greg Marshall is the, the best coach, and he's uh, he's Greg Marshall. So He's Greg Marshall right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no comment, but that's where he is right now. Yeah, and that they're like projected to be fourth in the, the American this year, so they're not even like – projected to be first you know is like they yeah. guaranteed to be the top program there even though i've seen a lot of cincinnati fans online uh upset about the lack of preseason hype around this team so it does give me some you know some pause about maybe they do have a better roster than people think but i think they are a football school they're top 10 uh they've they've uh, divvied up a bunch of resources to their football program to try to contend at a national level mm-hmm. and it's paying off obviously they're, and yeah I like they're football a football school. school until luke fickle leaves to like go coach it he's not going to coach at Michigan. I, I think he is. No, yeah. Be, I think he be, is. He, he wouldn't dream that's, of it. that's what makes sense. I was, I, I was like to Luke, Luke fickle leaves. And then in my head, I'm thinking like, what's the next big job that's going to open. I was like, and, and it, then it finally connected. Holy shit. It's going to be Michigan. He can't mm. go to Michigan. He's an Ohio state guy. You can't do that. Yeah. He can go to Texas, Michigan, Florida. He can't do it. But Bo Schimbeckler kind of did it though. I, I feel like Mullen's going to get fired at Florida just because the way he was like got in a fight the other week. <laughs> yeah, Back yeah, to the fools. Yeah. I feel like he's going to get fired eventually. I don't know. So. Down there, they, they, they probably that's, love it. That's yeah. part for the course. <laughs> uh, the last two I wrote down are the Rick Barnes two. Uh, oh. Tennis, Tennessee. They're Tennessee, basketball. Basketball. Yeah. They're, they're they're Michigan of the South. Yeah. Tennessee's basketball. Uh, and then Texas is the other one. I think Texas is neither. I think, yeah, I think Texas is probably gymnastics or something. Uh, I think Texas is a football school that expects to win both, right? They expect, like what I said about North Carolina, they have the same bias where they're like, we're supposed to be the best in both, and therefore they're mediocre in both. And I think they're a football school always and forever. They, Texas is football. And but maybe that's the problem. Maybe but they've like the been, they've been focusing too much on the other things and they've lost like the homegrown football aspect of it. 
I, I think they're neither. I don't think they're good at anything. I think if I think basketball, can I throw out another Texas school, Texas Tech? Are they basketball or football? I feel like that's another like they're definitely what, basketball. Now. But 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 Mahomes. Yeah, exactly. That's a tough one. Texas has on, tech. Texas has yeah. like a disposition of football, but a desire to be basketball. Yeah. And and they're not but, living their, to their true selves. Texas Tech has to be basketball. Chris yeah. Beard, it has to yeah. be. Yeah, Chris Beard's the future, and also yeah. the present. So. Fun game. Yeah. <laughs> is there any team like Florida? I guess Florida right now is officially football. Florida's uh, football. Yeah. Mike yeah. Georgia is, with Tom yeah. Crean. Are, are they obviously no, are football on. forever. Football. Yeah. Between the hedges. Uh, we know that. Uh, like USC. South Carolina. That's, that's a toss up. Cause must champ gets you. He just brings you in to make you think you have a chance to be good. And then he loses, you know, to Missouri or whoever. And yeah. then Frank Martin gets you to a final four. But also, like, there's ups and downs with their roster turnover. But this year, I like South. I'm gonna they're a basketball school. South Carolina. What about a Iowa? Iowa's a basketball school. Yeah. Iowa's a basketball school in a basketball state. Yeah, that's on the record. Iowa's a basketball state. I did not know that until Harrison Barnes came into my life, and then I was like, oh my goodness. All right, Tate, at number 86, we have um, what, what what would we call this? The Nogel Eastern update. the the post The post Michigan Nogel Eastern era has officially started. He has landed at Howard. Mm. Um, it, if, if you listen to the show in the off season, uh, you might remember the Nojel Eastern saga where he announced he was transferring from Purdue. This really upset Matt Painter who went on, I think it was Dan Dockett's show and mm. was ripping into Nojel Eastern leaving. Um, Nojel Eastern then within 24 hours announces that he is transferring to Michigan, which is, kind of a surprise because typically the way this works is you have to put your name in the portal first and, and give everyone a fair chance, give yeah. everyone a fair chance to call you. And then, mm-hmm. and only then can you like commit to a place. So it certainly seemed like there was some fishy business going on where uh, was Michigan tampering? Were they calling Nojel Eastern before he was actually in the portal? Was that, what, well, no, as it turns <laughs> out, they weren't tampering. What happened was Nojel Eastern committed to Michigan and Michigan had no idea. Michigan was not like, what? What's happening here? Uh, he does not get admitted into Michigan. He, uh, Whatever the academic situation, whether he didn't have the right credits or the great grades or both or whatever it is. Uh, does, so he does not transfer to Michigan, even though he announced that he was transferring to Michigan. Michigan never acknowledged it publicly. They never put out a statement yep. like, welcome to the program, Rogel. Yep. Good to yep. have you. Yeah. He uh, just tweeted it and said, I'm going to Michigan. It. Yeah. I, I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he decides, all right, uh, in that case, I'm going to reopen this recruitment. <laughs> we were crossing our fingers. He's going to land back at Purdue. That did not happen. He landed at Howard. He is now waiting on a waiver from the NCAA to play immediately. He tweeted on October 30th, NCAA, can you please, can you waiver me please with the praying mm. emoji hands? Uh, the NCAA replied, check DM. <laughs> 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 no, uh, <laughs> so that's where we stand. No gel Eastern currently on the outside looking in, uh, not eligible to play this season, but praying hands emoji. Maybe he'll get a waiver and we could see him on Howard this year. No show Eastern is one of those players that just popped off the screen for me. As I watched Purdue this one time, three one years time. ago. Yeah, and I, and I looked at Martinez and I said, I don't know who that kid is, but he's the best player on their team. No show Eastern obviously has the same opinion of himself that I have of him. He views he probably himself. listens to the show. He probably just like listened <laughs> to that show where you were like, no show Eastern is Glenn Robinson. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this guy's by far the best player on the team. What are you talking about? Dude. One of my favorite quotes from uh, a Howard coach. He is one of the smartest, if not the smartest basketball player I've ever been around. His IQ is through the roof. So this is no Joe Eastern facts. Th- those are the facts. Highest IQ ever seen. Uh, <laughs> and one of the best prospects around now, what you were pointing out is all the fodder surrounding him, which is all smoke. You know what I mean? This is a Tim Tebow situation where just give him the waiver, like let the man play McCure maker, who is obviously at Howard. He has come out and said, let's temper those expectations. There's a lot of people that think because he's a five-star, they're going to be a really good team. They have six freshmen coming in. They're not necessarily built to win now, even though they have the hype around them. No Joe Eastern would be one of the most veteran guys on their team. So he would be, Pretty impactful to Howard if he does play. But no Joe Eastern, like the fact that it's still waiting in the balance makes me have a deep feeling in my gut, Titus. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, I don't think and, so. And and no Joe Eastern is going to float to, you know, Especially Yugoslavia like or somewhere to play basketball. No, he's and... gonna be eligible, right? Like he's just not gonna be eligible this year. He's just gonna sit out. Or you think he's gonna if he doesn't get the waiver? I think if he doesn't get the waiver, he's, he's gonna, gonna, gonna go a pro. Yeah, exactly. 
He's going to transfer. He's going to test the waters, and by test the water, he's going to dive into the waters and just see what happens. Just start swimming. He's going to go to Australia. He's going to, he's going to like go New to New Zealand. League. He's yeah. going to go to New Zealand. He's going to decide he's going to play New Zealand without telling New Zealand. And he's going to show <laughs> up and they're going to be like, dude, you can't get into the country. There's coronavirus going on. And he's going to like sit on a boat out on, on, off the coast yeah. of New Zealand for a month as he's waiting to get cleared to enter the country. And, dude, and then in three years, the New York Knicks, they're going to announce him at a game. They're going to be like, and coming in a point guard for the Knicks, no show <laughs> Eastern. And we're going to be like, how did this happen? Uh, number 85 on our list is the other Purdue transfer that, that got headlines right around the time. No, Joel Eastern transferred. Was it before? Mm-hmm. Was it, it, was, it was, it was before. Bef- I, think I think it was, it was before. before. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first domino to fall out of West Lafayette. Matt Harms transferring mm. to BYU folks. Matt Harms is not dead yet. You, mm. you, you thought you killed him. You thought he was, he was gone from Purdue. You thought he was attached at the hip with Carson Edwards because they have that one gift together that we asked him about when he came on the show, uh, where he's fixing his hair and Carson saying, calm down Just yeah chill down. yeah 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 uh but as it turns out matt harms still has eligibility he he's a grad transfer at byu which we have just designated a football school but nonetheless he's gonna do all he can to make him a basketball school byu was great last year mark yep. Pope's first year on the job mark Pope came on the show too right mm-hmm. we had him on the we've show. had both yeah yeah we've had them both on the show uh byu was one of the big uh i don't want to say losers one of the big uh victims of the coronavirus canceling the tournament like they had a great team they were, they were the trendy out. pick like if you were yeah. if you were to call it the hipster pick it would be the ringer pick if you were going to pick a college <laughs> basketball team and they would have been like we love byu and that was the they had yoli childs at jake Toulson. Yeah. they had mark pope who it was you know, roger you, sherman would write an article about yes how yes loved, byu loved is BYU actually america's team for, yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's uh, it yeah, uh, so they're not going to be that good this year, Tate. They lost some guys. <laughs> Do you want me to name them? Yes, please Dick name Wilson, those guys. Yoli Childs, TJ Hawes, Dalton yeah. Nixon. Yeah. Uh, what was the dude? Who was the dude that looked like Trey Parker? Uh, Sel- <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think he's gone. Yeah. I think he's gone. <laughs> uh, so they, lo- they lose a lot of guys, but they do bring back Matt Harms. Matt Harms, not dead yet. BYU, yeah. not dead yet. Yeah, a lot of people forget that Matt Harms was the nation's top available transfer. He committed to BYU. I think that was a big Over get. Kentucky and Texas Tech. Yeah, yeah. yeah Over Chris Beard. I mean, yeah. that's that says a lot. Um, he was the guy that they went to first, and then they obviously got Olivier, Olivier Sar, Kentucky. I'm talking about after the fact they didn't get Matt Harms. So Matt Harms was a top commodity. BYU, Mark Pope, they have a great culture there, and I think it was more of a, a message being sent to the basketball powers that be that we're going to be a player for top recruits, and you know we're not afraid to recruit some guys here to, to make a real run. So mm-hmm. BYU, real team. Uh, uh, number 84 on the list, we have uh, – well, I'll pose this as a question. Yeah. Do you still believe in the must bus? In a word, yes. And the reason is the answer uh, may surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say yes is because Eric Musselman, of course, is who we're speaking of. Eric Musselman, he just like Sister Jean, who we started at 101, went viral in the same tournament. It was Mariah Musselman, his daughter, who was, you know, doing the bits with Sister Jean. Uh, we learned about Eric Musselman ripping his shirt in the locker room, yelling at the gods to unleash him and his Nevada Wolfpack team. They had mm-hmm. the Martin twins. We, we fell in love with the must bus. We were all in. We're like, this is a defensive-minded team. They like bringing in transfers that have been disregarded from other top programs. And we were riding high. And then he left to go to Arkansas. And I, I, I will so, say, I'm not sure where we are, but I'm on the out, bus. You left out a gap here. The, the, he's taking off the shirt, Mariah Musselman, yeah, all yeah, that excitement. Yeah. Then they bring the team back next year, bring a lot of guys back. We read about yeah. that mm-hmm. uh, in the previews <laughs> that year. And – uh they start out a little – well, they lose to Washington, if I remember right, in an exhibition game. They get their asses kicked. And that yeah. was, like, the first sign that, like, whoa. Maybe not as good Maybe as you not. thought. Because yeah. that Nevada roster was absolutely loaded on paper in terms of, like, scoring. Like, every yeah. single guy was a guy that could average, like, 15 a game on any yeah. other team. But they all obviously all couldn't. And that turned out to be kind of an issue because every single yeah. guy was like, I have to get mine tonight. So they start out like 10, 12 and 0 or something like that. Yeah. And then they inexplicably get their asses absolutely handed to them at New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Who New, New, It was a bad New Mexico team. They lose by like 30 at New Mexico. It was like 81 to 53, I think. Yeah. If I were and to then, like and then the season goes on. Long story short, they get a seven seed and lose the Florida in the first round. And the momentum on the must bus, boy. That, that, it that took really a hit. Happened. And then he went to Arkansas, rebranded it. Like, I – 
I am not off the must bus. I would just say the must bus is no longer a bus. I feel mm. like the must. It's like the the it's must, a caravan. It's a mid sized sedan at this point. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> get I'm still in the, riding in the back seat. Yeah, like, get get in the captain seat in your Toyota Sienna with Eric Musselman and go for the ride in Arkansas. <laughs> I uh, I think I agree with that. I think the big thing that he's putting out to the world now is one he's wearing the mask in practice, which is like if the Nuggets won a game in the in the bubble, he would be at practice and he have all Nuggets gear on. He's like Mike Malone's doing a great job. Mm-hmm. We're we're taking this one lesson we learned from Mike Malone uh, to implement in our practice. So he's connecting the tissue of like we can be a a tunnel, a lane, whatever you want to call it, to the NBA, which I think is important. He's also preaching a seven man rotation. And I think we're going to get a lot of this in college basketball this year, but I've seen him talk about it almost in every interview um, that I've watched him do over the past three or four months. He always brings up the seven man rotation, how they're tight in the rotation. Uh, and I think that's going to be why I'm on the must bus because I do like a tight rotation and uh, I don't like any lollygaggers getting thrown in there. I like a seven man rotation. Like nice tight. I like a nice tight rotation, tight rotation. and uh, must bus. I think that's going to be what he comes back with this year. He's like, I'm seven man rotation. No nonsense. We're pressing. Uh, you know, we're not afraid of anybody get on the bus, tight and- rotations and, and no position basketball. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. must bust. Remember when, remember when Tom Kareen, uh, we, we saw the graphic of a Georgia game and it, it, all their positions just said like player. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. player. yeah. He doesn't do by <laughs> positions anymore. So funny. Uh, number 83 on our list, Jerry Stackhouse's second first year at Vanderbilt. Last year was his first first year. Doesn't yep. count. We didn't get a tournament. Yep. Um, so throw that one away. So Jerry Stackhouse is now in his first year at Vanderbilt is what we're saying. And, and Jerry, uh, St- yeah, yeah. It, Jerry Stackhouse is poised. Uh, this is the question that I found on multiple sites when you talk about Jerry Stackhouse and his situation at Vanderbilt. And the, the question is simple, and I'll ask you the question, Titus, and I, I want to hear what your answer is. Mm-hmm. Could Vanderbilt's Jerry Stackhouse become a hot commodity in coaching mm. circles? That's what people were asking because well, it felt like his first year didn't go so hot. They The, the three-point record, we all remember that moment in time when they like lost that, and that was a big deal for all the Vanderbilt basketball heads out there. Dude, we forgot uh, to ask Aaron Neesmith about that. No, we did. We asked him. We asked him. Oh, we, we did. Asked him. Yeah. We asked I, him. I've lost track of I don't even think he cared about it. He was like, yeah, it was a big moment at the time, but like, I'm going to be in the lottery. Yeah. We're I'm, like, oh, I'm, nice. <laughs> my brain has turned to mush since we interviewed him. Well, we, uh, we, all those interviews we did during quarantine, so even when you brought up Mark Pope, I'm like, yeah, we did have him on yeah, the we show. Did, we did talk. We had, <laughs> dude, we had Mike Brown on the show <laughs> what the hell how'd we do that uh so uh uh yeah stackhouse he goes they go 11 and 21 last year but doesn't yep. count throw it out because if aaron neesmith's a lottery pick i think stackhouse is back i think we have exactly. to watch the draft yeah. we have to decide from that if, if neesmith goes high he rides that momentum i i i, I think we're good so my question to you you're talking about is he a hot commodity i'll throw mm. it back to you mm. uh give me the roy williams successor power rankings where does jerry stackhouse fall jerry Stack- West miller number one Wes Miller is definitely probably if you were to go around the actual Roy Williams circle of people, I think Wes Miller has a much better chance than people think, right? Mm -hmm. Hubert's not going to do it. Hubert Davis was the one that most people thought he left ESPN college game day to go be on staff. He just wanted to raise his family. You know, he just wanted Mm -hmm. to to, to live that life, be there. Jared Hass is of the world that is at Stanford. He's not going to be the guy. Carolina guy. He's a Kansas guy, right? So he's not going to be the guy. See, I'm talking about the coaching tree of Roy Williams, the guys that he would pull in. What Dean Smith always wanted at North Carolina is a black head coach. He knew that that was important. He knew that that would obviously carry a lot of cachet and it would mean a lot for the university itself. Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the answer was supposed to be Phil Ford and Phil Ford had, you know, some issues, you know, at times with, with alcohol and abuse. So he wasn't the guy and that just didn't work out. I'll tell you the dream scenario for North Carolina fans is for Jerry Stackhouse to come in as the head coach. And then the number two guy to be Rasheed Wallace. And then, and, and like, and that like is the great, cause Rasheed Wallace is the head coach at Jordan high school in Durham. My yeah. roommates went to Jordan and Jordan's a great school. That would be he, something. He, he's a high school head coach right now. Rasheed is a lot more organized and put together and runs a tight ship. Unlike what people may perceive based on the way he plays and acts. He's the man. And if they were able to bring Stackhouse to kind of be like the head coach CEO and have Rashid be the, you know, the players coach number two guy, not have to deal with all the political BS of being the head coach. And Jerry does that. That's the dream scenario for North Carolina. Where does Matt Doherty fall on the, uh, Matt Doherty is out. He's running Matt, a CB. Matt, I think he's running a CBD two. company. Yeah. Take he's two, Matt Doherty. Man, uh, he's done. He's there done. we have it. Uh, keeping it in uh, the state of North Carolina, number 82 on our list is Steve Forbes wow. entire existence. 
Um, he is the he is the new head basketball coach at Wake Forest, and we know him as the man who, after he got hired, shot this video where he's wearing a mask, a coronavirus mask, we'll call mm. it, uh, and says I'm I'm excited and points at the camera and God knows what else he says, and then he rips the mask off of his face, Tate, and spikes the mask mm. onto the basketball floor, and it was one of the most bizarre introductions to a a big time, quote unquote, big time coaching hire we've ever seen. And my question to you is what does Steve Forbes have to do at Wake Forest either this year or moving forward uh, to, to, to get to the point where you hear his name and you don't immediately think of him spiking a mask first. <laughs> I think that what Steve Forbes is going to do is to assert himself as a character. He went 30 and four last year at East Tennessee state. He is a guy that a lot of coaches like, that's what I keep hearing from, you know, ACC coaches that are assistant coaches or even a couple of head coaches have said that they really like Steve Forbes. Like he's a really likable guy. Yeah. And I think what Steve Forbes does is antics. Like he is a man of antics. He likes to have fun with his players. And I think in the ACC, we have a chance for Steve Forbes to do something like, I don't know, smack coach K on the ass, like a Mark Love Godfrey. Like yeah, we have things like do. that. Yeah. yeah. yeah we, we have a chance for Steve Forbes to be really in it and to be like, as collegiate Steve. about it as possible and just be super exuberant and excited. And I think that's what he's going to bring to Wake Forest. It's not going to be, we're going to bow down and say good game. And Danny Manning was a very reserved, respectful, mm -hmm. calm mm -hmm. coach who was, you know, also came on the show. During also came on the show. <laughs> Maybe that was the Tyson Tate dump. That was the one yeah, time we kind of blew it, yeah. but he needed a break. He wanted a break. He's probably doing a podcast now, but uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's one of those things where Steve Forbes can make a name for himself by beating the powers that be and making, a scene while doing it. And I Steve, think you will. Steve, if you're listening, uh, you should, you should lean into the having a crazy mask. That's what yeah. I think. I think, yeah. I think he should, I think he's a great candidate for like the Andy Reed. Yeah. Like big face shield type, like really lean into that. He, he seems like the cut, the type that will ride like the demon Deacon's motorcycle that comes on yeah. the floor. He seems like the guy that would ride that motorcycle, have a ghost rider, Nick cage costume on mm -hmm. and with his hair flaming out on CGI <laughs> or something. And they're like, and lose here's 30. your coach. Just lose by 30. Yeah. To <laughs> Davidson. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> and then he slapped Bob McKillop on the ass after the game. And everyone's like, I kind of like this guy. <laughs> it's like, man, I love Coach Forbes. Man. Wake Forest is going somewhere. <laughs> uh, all right. Let, let's, let's, let's get through these. Uh, number 81. <laughs> number 81. Uh, Maryland is about to play their first official season in the Big Ten. It's <laughs> happening. Maryland. Uh, We've resisted it for so long. They, mm. they, the, the, the powers that be told us Maryland was in the Big Ten. The Big Ten said, not yet. You have to mm. earn your way in. Maryland mm. was like, we don't even really want to be here anyway. We want to still be in the ACC. Yeah, they're like, there's what are we doing? Under Armour lied to us. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of, lot of just, yeah, it, didn't, it, it wasn't a great fit. And then finally, Maryland did what we were all waiting for them to do to, to, to get inaugurated into the Big Ten. They limped across the finish line last year and shared a third of a regular season Big Ten title. Mm -hmm. And that was all it took, I guess. So now Maryland is uh, officially in the Big Ten. So this is the first season of Maryland. And the, coincidentally, Rutgers still not in the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rutgers trying their best by being still the not, AP poll, yeah. still not officially in. Maryland did it. Uh, and I Maryland think every it, single yeah. year for the past four years that we've been doing previews together and talking about college basketball, uh, we have always made one thing – you know, blatantly known to the world, which is Mark Turgeon is a turd and Mark Turgeon <laughs> is not going to, you know, win the big 10. And then Mark Turgeon, what did he do? He proved us wrong and he won and he the big 10 for the haters along the way, along the way. He was upset. Yeah. He was calling out other coaches, called out coach Holtman in front of the program. Mm -hmm. We remember, and uh, we respect the fact that he climbed to the top uh, with everyone saying that to he can To one-third of the top. Yeah, to one-third <laughs> of it. Uh, but Mark Turgeon, not on the hot seat uh, this year going into the season. I think that's a I pretty big win. Uh, I think Mark him. Turgeon, uh, th this is classic Turgeon. Like, they got the hopes up. You win the Big Ten. Now they lose Anthony Cowan. You lose yep. Jalen Smith. Yep. Three best players. Maryland is not going to be good this year, Tate. No. Nope. Um, so if I'm Mark Turgeon, I, I assess the Greg Marshall situation. And I, I wonder, Tate, is this did, is this the is, jump? Is this setting up for Mark Turgeon to go back to Wichita State, his alma mater? Wow, I don't know. That's, I don't know. You tell me. That would be to to think if you told us two years ago that Mark Turgeon would be the one to leave Maryland. That actually would be worse for Just Maryland. Get ahead of I it. I feel yeah, exactly. I feel like that would be worse for Maryland if that were to happen. That uh, wow, 
That really got me thinking right there. In fact, Wichita State fans are like, wait a second, that could happen? As I said, his alma mater, by the way, I, I, I knew that was wrong. As I said, I meant that he coached there before, not that he played. He played at Kansas. We, yeah. we all know that. He's not going yeah. to Kansas. But Kansas, could will Kansas be open? Mark turns to Kansas? Wow. wow. <laughs> Who says no other than a Kansas fan in the world? <laughs> Bill Self uh, is yelling no. No, Mark Turgeon, go back to Wichita State. It's a different job. It's a better job than when you left. Uh, that's that's what everyone who, wants. Who do we see at Maryland? Juan Dixon goes back from Coppin Sean State. Miller. Oh, Sean Miller. <laughs> 2010 that's all over again. That's perfect. Run it back. Yeah, that's good times. Rick Pitino. Duh. <laughs> I've seen Rick Pitino at every job that opens up this time. Uh, all right, number 80. We got a, we got a couple more we got to get to before we wrap this thing up. Uh, number 80. Is the SMU-TCU rivalry officially dead? Did we did we kill it? I think we killed it. I think we killed it, but I think it, it we have to point it out. One because we you know we have SMU friends of the program. Uh, SMU was very homey to us. We went down there. We played some basketball. We hung around the campus. We got the full tour. We understood why the football program was going to you know pop in the next few years, and they have. They've been great. Um, mm-hmm. They have been a a great team. I mean, they ran the conference the first four years they were in the American. They were the best team. And Larry Brown was obviously there, but it was a different era. It feels like this year they have a chance to kind of capitalize on the back end uh, of this run with Jankovic or whatever. But uh, I don't know about the rivalry, but I don't, all I know is that Jamie Dixon wanted to leave, you know, TCU at one point or so <laughs> never, we heard. Never forget so, that. Yeah. Jamie never forget Dixon. that. Yeah, he was like, UCLA, buy me out. UCLA is like, we're, we're trying to get out of this Under Armour deal, man. We, we don't have time for this. <laughs> force, Jamie Dixon's like, just force majeure. Yeah, he's, force like, majeure. he's like, do you know these two words, force majeure? <laughs> Ever heard of it? <laughs> uh, so from 1920 to 2019, SMU and TCU played every single year except for two years. Ugh. I don't, I don't know what, what happened. Year. What happened? Every single year. And then you and I, well, I'll tell you what happened. You and I went to the game. We declared it America's next great college <laughs> basketball rivalry. They have not played since. There are no plans to play in the future. We killed it. We, we hugged it too tight. We loved it. We, we gave it a nice big squeeze. And then we took a step back and we were like, did, did we just suffocate this rivalry? I think we did. So, uh, do you think it was too much pressure? I think it was because the, the game yeah. that we went to also TCU won that game, right? Yeah, they and, did. And and I think and we were at also, SMU. Since we were there, Kendrick Davis, the point guard for TCU, transferred to SMU, which is, mm. just feels dirty as hell. You can't have a rivalry like that and have guys transfer from one to the other. So I don't know. It, it's I just wanted to point that out. Pour, pour one out for SMU, TCU. We're, we're not giving up on it fully, but at the same time, we can't be the only ones it, that care. It, yeah, it, it, it might be over. It, it might, might be officially be over. over. Yeah. Uh, all right, number 79. Can Jeff Capel get a return of investment in year three on, on the bags he's dropping here? Wow. This is the Jeff Capel's third first year, we'll call it. I was uh, going to say, it does feel like it's his second first year, but the fact that it is his third first year, the clock is ticking on Jeff Capel and the idea that he can build – the Duke of the North where he brings in five stars. Uh, he, you know, sells the dream, sells the NBA dream, gets these guys taken care of. Uh, he's been on the four star push. He hasn't been able to really get in the five star world, but he's been doing well with the four stars, which is good to see. So the bag update is Jeff Capel. He's doing okay. Uh, he plays Northwestern in the ACC big 10 challenge this year yep. versus Chris Collins that coach K will watch that game. Coach K will do his scouting report at the time to see where he's at with his predecessors and, uh, you know, seeing what he wants to do in Capel's the future. Very, I, I'm going to say this. Capel's got to be very low on the list. I think Capel's aware, top five. I, I crunched the five. numbers. I crunched the numbers. You ready for this? Uh, take out the two Blake Griffin seasons for Jeff Capel, which, you know, it's, it's, I guess I'm already manipulating the data, but mm. it's, it's my data and this is my show. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> You're like uh, Nate Silver. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wrong. Yeah, it's my, I told I you this. <laughs> Uh, if you, if you remove Blake Griffin season, so all the teams that Jeff Cable has coached without a uh, generational otherworldly talent, Blake Griffin on his team. So that's nine seasons as being a head coach. He has a combined record of 152 and 121 for a winning mm. percentage of 54%. Oof. Yikes. Not good. Not good. Not good. That is, that is not good. We are in year three. Uh, Pitt is not expected to make the NCAA tournament this year. They're not expected to compete in any way, shape, or form in the Big East. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll surprise us. That'd be cool. But uh, mm. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I, yeah. I, that's the, my, my official Jeff Capel analysis. I don't know. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're waiting on this guy. I think the most the, the only player on their team that really matters as far as interesting is a guy by the name of Nike Sabandi, who is the Miami of Ohio transfer. And I don't even know if he goes by Nike, but it's spelled Nike, so we're gonna call him Nike. And uh, if that goes through, he averaged 15 points per game last year for Miami Ohio. 
that's a good piece for Pittsburgh. Maybe yeah, because guys, guys that go from the MAC to the ACC always usually always keep thrive. the same production. Yeah, yeah, it's they, always the same. They take a, he, so he's definitely going to average sixteen a game in the ACC for sure. Yeah, it just seems like Jeff Capel. I don't know how long the leash is at Pitt, and I feel like five years is the amount of time that he gets. And you're already in year three, and if you don't make the tournament in year three, then people get to talking, and you know, I'm that's not what you want. Home. I'm coming home. Always Joe back to K staff. Stallings face as you play. Yes, the coming home song. Yes. <laughs> I need. Please, I need Kevin. that. I need the coming home. When LeBron announced he's coming back to Cleveland, make that video except it's Pittsburgh and it's Kevin Stallings face. Where is Kevin Stallings? Smash right the now? retweet button. Man. That's the question. Where is he? What is he doing? Is he scouting? Uh, you want to talk about hypes? Uh, 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 you want to talk? I mean, Duke Disciples. You want to talk about uh, Bobby Hurley, Arizona State at number 78 on our list. The hype has never been higher for Bobby Bags. This, for Mr. December himself, he was ranked 18th in the AP preseason poll that just came out mm. today. Remy Martin is back, Tate. Five-star Joshua Christopher is on the roster. Many people are saying this is the team to beat in the Pac-12. And other people are laughing at the idea of Arizona State Sun Devils being the team to beat in the Pac-12. Yeah, the, the, the person that is known as many people is a guy by the name of Zach Schwartz, who we had on right. this program one time. And he it's is- It's actually the, just one person. He's just tweeting yes. it over and over and over and over. Over, and, he's, yeah. and he keeps putting it out in the world. And we keep saying two words back to a Mr. December. Arizona State was the last undefeated team in the country not too long ago. They own December. Bobby Hurley likes to get out to a hot start. And then it all goes to hell in a hand basket, a basket pretty quickly. And I have the quote from Bobby Hurley because he was asked about this. And I like this. I think this is good. I think awareness is key. The fact that Mr. December knows he's Mr. December means he can try to be Mr. February, or Mr. January, or who knows, maybe even Mr. March. He mm. says, I like my chances not only early in the season, but long term with when you're bringing in Remy Martin to the court and Alonzo Berg to the to the court with freshman Josh Christopher, Marcus Bagley, and you have guys like Tayshawn Cherry. He just starts naming all the guys. This is literally like as if he's a beat reporter. He's like Kamani Lawrence that have been – and then the best part of the quote at the end, he names like 15 guys on the roster, right? Uh -huh. And he goes, all those guys have been through a lot of wars with me. And, again, he named Marcus Bagley and Joshua Christopher in that list, guys that have never played for him. But, anyways, he, he says that they're willing to go to war with he him. Didn't say they, he didn't say they played games with him. He just said he went to war with them. So yeah, so who knows? But, yeah, with the, with the bags. The bags. <laughs> it's turned, it's turned into warfare. What it took to get Joshua Christopher to Tempe. Who knows? Who the hell knows? Who knows? But all we know is that Bobby Hurley survived it. Uh, yep. He got through the war, and he's on the other side. And it looks to be – the year that he gets over the hump. He's saying that he's confident in this bunch. I like the idea of Bobby Hurley making the leap this year and then getting a big job, right? I mean, even there have been some whispers amongst some of my friends that why would Bobby Hurley just not go to Arizona if it opens up? And I think that would be absolutely that would be so that was, unbelievable. That, that's what that rivalry needs. That's what the Pac-12 needs. Yes, yeah, that would be great. Down. So that's – if Bobby Hurley does it this year, then who knows who comes calling because Bobby Hurley is going to be one of the hottest coaches uh, around the country. So this is not the year. If, not if Mick Cronin has anything to say about it. <laughs> UCLA is still a team to beat in the Pac-12. Mick Cronin versus Bobby Hurley arguing during a basketball game about a call – Honestly, could be the best TV on the earth. Well, they're yelling at Ted Valentine, and Ted Valentine's just like stiff arming both of them and holding yeah. them back. And yeah. they're yeah. Running, running at 100 miles per hour. 100 miles an hour <laughs> yeah, in place fit. as yes. Ted Valentine is palming their bald heads. Well, I guess Bobby Hurley. Yes. Bald, but... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Two more, and we'll wrap this thing up. Number 77. Buzz Williams. I've said it many times. <laughs> I, I'm going to say it again. What is Buzz Williams up to? He's up to something. I'm not really sure. He won SEC Coach of the Year last year. Uh, was I don't even remember Texas A&M being particularly relevant last year. I don't think they're going to be particularly relevant this year, mm. but they're going to be good enough to kind of be ish relevant. I, I I don't know. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm worried. I'm scared. I'm scared that I'm not scared of Buzz Williams. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is there any buzz surrounding Buzz Williams? And I looked at you when we were talking about buzz and what's next. And obviously he did the Jimbo Fisher route, which is I take the Texas A&M money and yep. I'm content. I don't necessarily have to win or compete for national championships, but I'm doing good. But Buzz Williams is pulling a Kylie Jenner. And I know that you never thought that you would hear that. And you don't even know what that means. But Kylie Jenner, but he's going up to cops and handing him a Pepsi. And <laughs> that's, Kendall oh, that's Kendall Jenner. That, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a that's a separate thing. That's that's what Will Wade's doing. Uh, he's like, please don't do anything. Just let it happen. Uh, anyways, Buzz Williams is is realizing things, 
And uh, and that's what Kylie Jenner, she said in 2015, she's realizing things. Buzz Williams, he keeps doing these reflection videos uh, since the quarantine has started. So I pulled one of them today. And here's what he said. The only way you can expand your world is to get outside your world. Once you get outside your world, the only way you can grow and hashtag get better is to translate it back to your world. As coaches, if we can translate it back, it should make us more efficient and more impactful. This is basically he does verses every single day, uh, you know, just spiritual thoughts mm -hmm. that come to Buzz Williams. He's realizing a lot of the world as the realize, world realize, <laughs> realize. <laughs> exactly. Buzz he's real. <laughs> he's realizing lots of things. Live, laugh, love. He uh, as the Joker. In the dark yeah. Circus. Yeah. <laughs> quite, quite seriously. It has been a joy to watch him do uh, these little renditions of, of yeah. what he's going through during quarantine, but realizing things, Buzz Williams, uh, it's just, I, it just feels like wh whatever's going on at Texas Tech over there, it feels like when, you know, the, the uh, tsunami's coming and the tide, like, pulls – it gets low tide, you know? Yeah. And that's what yeah. they say is, like, if, you, if the tide starts getting low really fast, like, run for the hills. That's mm. what I feel like going on at Texas A&M. Like, the tide is just getting kind of low, and you're like, oh, man, Buzz Williams is kind of disappearing. Mm -hmm. And then the tsunami is going to come. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Yeah. Like, year three, if you, if you go back and look at Marquette, year three is when he started to get it going. Uh, same thing happened at Virginia Tech was year three. This is year two at, at Texas A&M, so I don't think it's going to happen this year. But I'm just warning everybody that it's, something's happening. He's going to like he's going to start landing recruits for next year. He's going to sign some like JUCO kids or, or get some grad transfers or something. Or he's realizing things so that he or can he's make the, he's just, he can make the big leap to Texas mm. or somewhere else because uh, I think I think he's kind of waiting in the winds to see where he wants to go. Get paid, well, wait the wins. He's yeah, but he's up to something. Yeah. The game, I, knew, I know this much. The end game yeah. is not finishing middle of the pack in the SEC for yeah. the rest of his career. That's Absolutely. Not, that's not what he's going to do. That's not buzz. Uh, finally, to round out our, our first installment of our top 100, uh, at number 76, uh, Penny Hardaway last year promised, guaranteed, dare I say, that his team would win a national championship before they even played one game. Then James Wiseman played three games and was deemed ineligible for the rest of the year. Uh and then the tournament got canceled. So I ask you, Tate, does, does, how do we respond to how, how, what's the final verdict on this guarantee? Is it, does it carry over to this year? <laughs> Is it a, uh, uh, a wash that's, it's, it, you know, it, it, it's very much to me, very quad a green, like where as long as it happens, eventually, eventually. it does count. And uh, I think that it's an, it's an outstanding claim. So if it happens this year, it does count. Uh, I want to say this. We, we joked when he went to Memphis in the first place and he pulled the coup off and he gets Tubby Smith out of town. We, we, everyone was really excited, right? Everyone was yeah. telling us how excited they were about Memphis basketball. Vernon, Chris Vernon, a friend of the show, was yelling at us about how excited he was. And you asked a simple question. You're like, but what is, what is his coaching style, right? What, yeah. what does he do? Like, what, what does Penny care do about on the zone? basketball court? They, yeah, 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 yeah. What is it? What is it about motion offense? Like, what are they, what, what, yeah. So I looked into this, right, last year. Uh, so basically, uh, Penny Hardaway said this year, right, that he wanted to be the fastest team in the country. That's yeah. his identity. Memphis is going to be the fastest team in the country. Book it. You know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to be the fastest team in the country. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Let me look up what they did last year. Last year, 28th in the country in adjusted tempo. Okay, mm -hmm. that's pretty impressive. And then you keep looking at the numbers, right? You're playing fast. 28th in the country they turned the ball over last season i shit you not america 22 percent of the time so <laughs> so like let me just say your your identity cannot be to be the fastest team in the country if you just uh, uh, just yeah. obliterate possessions and turn the ball over at a, almost 25 one out of every four possessions you turn the ball over almost so that can't be the case to be the fastest team in the country it seems like they need maybe need to slow it down so my advice would be for penny to maybe like pump the brakes a little bit on um, trying to make a splash, right? The, the splash is gone. Like we get it. You coach in Memphis, yeah. find an identity. We get it. You made the splash and do you don't have every, to be the fast team in the country? Basically every coach, except Tony Bennett and Greg Gard says <laughs> they want to be the, the fastest fast team in the country. Yeah. As they enter the season, every yeah. single one of them. Yeah. Um, I actually think this year's Memphis team is going to be better than last year. Landers Nolly from Virginia yeah. tech. Who we both I think, saw in I think not year. having expectations and not having the eyes of, america on them is going to do wonders for them that they can mm. uh yeah just kind of ease into the season and figure it out and like losing isn't a catastrophe like like the memphis lost to oregon right like early on in yep. the uh early on in the season and then you're you kind of like are are 
analyzing the whole team. Like, is this going to work? Is this Memphis experiment going to work with Penny mm. and James Wiseman and all these other freshmen? And mm. uh, I don't think that's going to happen this year. If Memphis loses. It's just like any other team lost. It's like, yeah, that happens sometimes in basketball. We don't have to make a big deal. They're not going to have the the media attention that they had last year. And I think that's going to help them out. Yeah. And the only way that they do have the attention is if Penny Hardaway is, you know, out front and saying, you know, talking We're shit about the Rick Barnes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the only way. And that's like a very, it feels to me like Penny came in very Rex Ryan, like where he wanted to make yeah. the, like I said, the splash, make the noise, get the attention, get the headlines and then hope that the basketball pans out. But we're past that. Like anything you say now feels like, okay, you're guaranteeing something that's not going to happen. Okay, we get it. Yeah, you like, did the cannonball to the pool, Penny. Now yeah, you got to yeah. keep your head above water. And exactly. You gotta, now you got to swim. You got to start swim. swimming, please. Yeah. Uh, there you go. That's that's 100 through 76. Part one is is through. We did it. Is that it? Is there anything else? I mean, no, that's be- that's 101 also. We gave Sister Jean again. Yeah, we we want to remind everyone. One. We got we had a bonus one. But this is the first quadrant or the first whatever. First the first, yeah, Yeah, the first episode. We got through a lot of teams. We got through a lot of thoughts. I, yeah. I feel good about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited as we keep going. This is probably what you would consider the worst of this because it's only going to yeah. get better. That's how we're ranking this. Yeah. So number one that will is... be our number one storyline of the season. That's, so that's in case you were tag... confused. <laughs> yeah, that is the tagline of our podcast. If you hated, if you hated today's show, we promise next one will be better. <laughs>